Welcome, aspiring data scientists, to our highly anticipated video, Cracking the Code 101. And I'm sure everyone of you are excited. I want to welcome you especially for those of you who are first timers here on our YouTube channel. I want to welcome you especially and to stay tuned, kindly hit the subscribe button. Okay, so um, the title for this very series is Cracking the Codes 101. And um, right here, it's all about you being able to master data science interviews for success. And we'll be looking at data science tools like Excel, SQL, Power BI, Tableau, Python, JavaScript, and a lot of others. If you look in here, yeah, you will notice that we are looking at the 101 which is the very first series, which means we will not be covering everything in this very series. And that's more reason why you need to subscribe on our YouTube channel. So you stay tuned for back to back of our breathtaking and quality training sessions. I am thrilled to have you join us on this knowledge packed journey towards acing your data science interviews. My name is Williams. Now, I want you to know something before we proceed, that in the world of data science, where competition is fierce and opportunities abound, mastering the art of interviewing is a game changer. Whether you're a seasoned professional looking to make your next career move or an enthusiastic newcomer eager to break into the field, this training series or this video is tailor-made for you. And I want to assure you that throughout this session, we will unravel the secrets behind excelling in data science interviews, equipping you with the skills, knowledge, and confidence to navigate even the most challenging scenarios. From technical questions to behavioral assessments, we will dive deep into the essential components that can make or break your interview performance. But remember, it's not just about acing the interview. It's about unlocking your true potential as a data scientist. And that's part of what we do here in Miramar Consulting. We will explore the mindset and strategies needed to showcase your expertise, communicate effectively, and demonstrate your problem-solving prowess. Whether you're facing whiteboard challenges, case studies, or coding exercises, we have got you covered. Through our practical insights, real life examples, and expert guidance, we aim to empower you with the tools you need to stand out from the competition. We will share insider tips. For instance, there are a lot of tips over here. I hear people cry out that our MySQL is difficult for them to understand. But with these insider tips, these um, do's and don'ts, it becomes easier for you to be able to understand this. Because before you hear, are proven techniques that have helped my own self and you know countless data science professionals land their dream roles. So get ready to dive head first into the world of data science interviews. Whether you are aiming for that coveted position at a top tier company or striving to advance your career to new heights, this video will serve as your ultimate guide. Before we kick off, I want you to remember that success is not a matter of chance. It's a result of preparation, dedication, and continuous learning. Together, let's crack the code and unlock the doors to your data science ambitions. Let's begin our journey. And um, towards mastering data science interviews for success. So our main lecture begins. All right. So when we talk about data science, you know, it's um, a large, should I use the word concept that um, time to time, a lot of, um, you know, um, persons come up with their own words, that data science is this, data science is that. But aside that, by the time you get to an interview, for those of you who have been in interviews and um, data science interviews, you come to understand that um, it's not actually what you expected you're being um, asked. Okay, and that's why I took my time, you know, due to my experience in this field to ensure that those particular questions, which always comes up as headache, you know, also to new base, which could also be like a kind of surprise and, um, you know, making sure that all that becomes easier. Okay, 
for you to actually be able to um, understand all that matters as far as um, your data analyst or your data, whatever career relating to data science is concerned. So we'll be taking some of these questions that I have over here. And uh, before that, these are some of the tools you should take note of. And uh, most especially, I have here a self guide to become a data analyst. If you have been following us, you might have seen one of our videos I did on data storytelling that is very important. So look at this as a ladder that you must climb. And um, it's not something you get to um, um, chapter five or page five, then you stop. That, oh, I can now, I now understand SQL and database. I can now take care of issues relating to data visualization. I can work perfectly with Tableau and come out. I hope you have also signed up to Tableau Cloud Okay, Tableau Cloud is um, a good one. Okay, so go straight there. Um, whichever way you want to do it, go and try it. Okay, Tableau, we all know that Tableau is uh, one of the best specialization tools out there. So go there and um, get your, your cloud version activated. Trust me, it's one that you will actually look forward to. All right, so um, let's look at our questions right over here. So for the journey, these are the steps you must follow, okay? From your math skills, your Excel basis, your Python, SQL and database, data visualization, data preparation and validation. We have here exploratory, exploratory you can see the, the, the grammar, okay? But one thing about these things is that um, they all have same goals, which is to be able to turn raw data into meaningful information so that you and I can be able to derive insight from it. So whether it's exploratory or exploratory, whatever it is, data analysis, you don't have to worry. All you have to do is just to begin. Okay. We also have your machine learning libraries. We have the soft skills training um, sets, which is also needed for your career line, the data ethics and privacy, the business understanding and data storytelling. And you know, at the end of the day, you are good to go. And you need all the insider tips, like I said, and we are going to make it available at all step. Okay, so mastering data science interviews for success. So let's take some of these questions. The first one here says, what is the difference between data mining and data analysis? Point of correction, these questions were sent to me from um, some participants and non-participants also. You know, when you're in the business of consulting, people will call your phones, you know, to ask one or two questions. So um, they sent some of these questions to me and I tried to, um, you know, um, group them together. That's um, join them together. Don't worry, we'll still talk about join, you know. Um, join is also um, um, another one, another aspect to when it comes to SQL, the SQL joins. Okay. So um, in the world of data analytics, this is how we roll here. So we have this question that says, what is the difference between data mining and data analysis? And the person who sent this to me actually shared her view, it was a lady, on, uh, about um, what she, the, how it was that it came unexpectedly to her. And I believe um, when she was being taught in her own center, which was not our training, she didn't undergo our training and see how people can be funny. So um, when she was trained over there, I believe definitely that the tutor might have mentioned these words, but these are some of the things a lot of times people try to um, take on uh, as if it's not a serious one, okay? So um, what you should know when it comes to the aspect of data mining and data analysis is this. Okay, I would like to start with data analysis because that's the main, the, um, the key um, feature there. Okay, now when we talk about data analysis, what you need to know is that data analysis involves data cleaning. Okay, it involves um, um, data cleaning, you know, and um, um, so data now is not present, you know, in this very aspect in a well-documented format. And um, um, sometimes you can see the tool I use now. You don't understand what I said, right? Of course I know, okay? So what you should just know is this, data analysis, is used to order and organize raw data in a meaningful manner. That's what data analysis is. It is all about you being able to transform your raw data into meaningful information. So whatever grammar, just cram one of the simplest um, definition and just see it. Transforming raw data 
or ordering, organizing raw data in a meaningful manner or transforming it into um, a meaningful, meaningful information that actually companies can derive insight from. So take note of that. And one thing you need to know to consigning data mining is that data mining, like data mining here, yeah, it is performed, data mining is performed on clean and well-documented data. That means data mining comes after data analysis because um, the, 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 there are steps involved in data analysis. And you heard me said about cleaning, cleaning your data, it involves data cleaning, okay? Now, after that part, that's where data mining now comes because data mining is now performed on that clean data, that data you've already cleaned. So you now know which comes first before which. And data mining is used to recognize patterns in data that have been stored. And of course, when I talk about data stored, data storage, you know, we are now referring to database. And most especially number one database application there at that point is the SQL because the SQL is that um, the, um database application, you know, which manages data stored, okay, data stored. So these are things you need to understand. And you also need to understand that results extracted from data mining are not easy to interpret. But whereas those that are extracted from data analysis are easy to interpret. Come on, if I navigate to my Excel or I go to uh, my Python or I go to my SQL, there are lots and lots of things you're going to learn from there, okay? So don't take it as if um, um, it's a hard one. No, it is not. So data mining is uh, mostly used for machine learning. And analysts have to just recognize the patterns with the help of what we call algorithms, okay? So, but when it comes to data analysis, it is used to gather insights from raw data, which has to be cleaned because we can't work on a data that is not structured. So your data to be structured, it has to be cleaned. Data cleaning is a process. If you're using tools like Power BI, you then have to use what you call the Power Query. Even Excel, you can use the Power Query to clean your data. So data cleaning is, 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 is one of the tasks you must do as far as data analysis is what is involved. You must clean your data. You must organize your data before ever you start performing any analysis. So these are things that are very important for you to take note of. Now we have a question sitting right here that says, what is the process of data analysis? Okay, now you heard me quite well what I said about data analysis, that by data analysis we are talking about, you know, all the processes involved, you know, in you being able to turn that raw data into something meaningful. And you know, when we are now talking about all the processes, tell me one. Okay, before you start carrying out your or performing, um, your analysis, okay, performing the analysis, rather, you have to receive the data, right? That's the process of collation. Data must be collated. So the um, when you're asked about the process of data analysis, you should know that the process begins with what? Collation. You must collate your data, okay? You can call it collate, collation, or you can call it um, collecting. They all mean the same thing. So um, um, at that part, we are now looking at, you know, the data gets collected from various sources and is stored so that it can be cleaned and prepared. So in this step, there are critical things you also need to um, take note of or be very careful because when it comes to data analysis, you know, um, um, it requires brain work and it also requires critical um, thinking. So these are important things for you because um, there are there are errors that could affect you know the integrity of your data. For example, my students do always hear me talk about the aspect of blanks that has to do with missing values and um, outliers. So they suspected that all the missing values and outliers you know um, or will be removed you know when you're collating your data. So it's very important. So another process again, another that you need to put into consideration is the aspect of analyzing, analyzing. Okay. So um, you need to be able to analyze your data, and once your data is ready, you know what you need to do for it to be ready. It means you have cleaned the data. So once you have cleaned it and it is ready, the next step is to analyze that data. The model, you know, is now going to be run repeatedly for improvement. Okay, so it's expected you um, you do that. Also, um, another thing you also need to take note of as far as the process is concerned is the aspect of creating reports because 
Finally, at the end of the day, you know, all your models are implemented and then your reports, um, your the shareholders, management, you know, these days I keep saying it, they are not interested in um, reports that are too bulky. They want something that we see straight and know that, yes, this is what happened, this is what happened. And that leads us to um, the different types of data analysis that we have. You know, we have the descriptive analytics, which talks about what has happened. For example, a lot of us are involved in businesses, and at the end of the month, we want to know our sales performance for that month. At that point, you're looking at what we call um, descriptive analysis, because descriptive analysis is that type of analysis that looks into what has happened. You want to um, see how you can ascertain, you know, your sales performance for that month. Why? Because um, the, the sales have already what taking place. Okay, you're now working with those available data. So whenever you have such a scenario, just know it that you're in for descriptive analysis. But when we are looking at, you know, the aspect of forecasting, that's now a grammar, right? Forecasting. Now we're talking about you being able to, um, your what will happen in the future questions like what will happen in the future. At that point, you're now looking at what we call what prescriptive analytics. I don't want to go further once you have understood these two, because these are the most common attacks you will ever be facing, okay? Once you're good with them, trust me, you should be turning your cash and uh, um, um, solving a lot of problems out there. So it's important. So number three says, can you mention a few problems that um, data analysts usually encounter while performing um, the analysis. Yes, there are a lot of problems. There are a lot of problems, not just you. A lot of problems. I was making mention of um, um a problem like the issue of um the issue of um errors. Okay, so that's one of them, and uh, it's also important that as a data analyst you look out for those errors because you cannot work with a data you know that is not in order. Okay, so um, by that, I'm talking about problems like when you have duplicates also. Imagine you're working in, with a data set and there are a lot of duplicates on it. You must be able to remove those duplicates before you proceed. There are um, 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 mistakes in spellings. You know, it's very important. Okay, these things affect the quality of your data and you must ensure you remove them, okay? And also, if you're extracting data from a poor source, you know, we have different data sources. We have the web source, we have the Oracle source, we have the SQL server source, we have a lot of source, we have the common source, which is the Excel source, and a lot of them. So if you are extracting data from those, any of these, those sources, always check to ensure you're not extracting your data from a poor source, because this could be a problem, as you would have to spend a lot of time cleaning that data. And trust me, I've gone through a lot of stress like that, and I know what it takes. Tax you're supposed to handle in two hours. You see yourself handling it, you know, in two days because you didn't follow the right procedures. So it's very important that you do that. Okay. Also, when you extract data from sources, it's very important that the data may vary in representation. So now, when you combine those data from these sources, you notice that um, that the variation in the representation could result in a delay. So this is also a problem. Okay, you are start having slow loading and so on. And I keep saying it, it's a data analyst. You are one of the virtues you must have is also patience. You need to be patient. Okay. Also, uh, I talked about the issue of um, blank spaces where your data are not complete. There are missing data. You know, you need to look out for um, and good measures on how you can also tackle that because it could be a problem, you know, to perform the analysis of your data. So these are problems you must look out for. If you're asked an interview, these are problems you should say. And trust me, when you point them out clearly, definitely ah, they will understand you. They will understand you. The thing is, if you don't now go and um, you don't say anything, that's when it becomes a problem. Okay, someone also sent me this, that's uh, what is data cleansing and what are the, the best ways to practice data cleansing? I've said it before and I will say it again, okay? That by data cleansing, it is the process of identifying and removing errors to enhance what the quality of data. So once they ask you what is data cleansing, they're talking about quality of your data. So it's just the process of identifying you. First of all, first of all, have to identify the errors in that data before you can be able to remove it. You cannot remove what you have not identified. And thank God, in applications like the Tableau, Tableau has um, um, a, a data um, identifier tool, which we call the data interpreter. You can also use it. When it comes to Power BI, we have a tool um, called the Power Query, 
in Excel, we also have the Power Query, which you can use to clean your data. So these are important. Sometimes they can use terminologies to um, to confuse you. For example, they might ask you what is ranking, what is ranking, ranking and um, data wrangling is the same thing. Okay, data cleansing or wrangling or data and wrangling is the same thing. They all mean the same thing. Just like data analysis, data analysis, you know, people kill themselves to ask questions relating to that. I tell them they all have same goals. Their goal is to be able to turn raw data into meaningful what? Information. So you need to understand these whole processes, you know, ensuring that um, 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 you have a clean tax ongoing. Okay. So also we have a question here that says, what are the important steps in the data validation process? Okay. Now, um, the key point word here, always look out for the keyword. The keyword here is for data validation. So the first thing that you should tackle is data validation. What is data validation? Of course, you know, in Excel, we have, um, from our data tab, we have a particular tool called data validation, which you can actually use. You can see it here. Okay. You can see the um, data validation tool here. And now a question comes that what are the important steps in data validation process? Now, I'm not just talking about this to this just for in the aspect of Excel. But what I want you to know is that in as much as they all bear the same name, data validation, the data validation here is the process of validating data, okay? And um, it's always in two processes, always in two processes. This year you now hear things like data screening, data verification. They are not just grammars there, it's just for you to understand these concepts. For data screening, we're looking at um, the different kinds of algorithms that are used in this step to screen the entire data to find out any inaccurate values because trust me you need to remove them you need to remove them okay and the aspect of data verification which is also very um, 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 an essential one for you to also look into okay because each and every um, value is evaluated on various use cases and you know before you arriving at your final point you know it's important that you um, always ensure that these important steps are also um, being considered is very important. Now, there's a question that says, what do you think are the criteria to say whether a developed data model is good or not? Now, this has to do with the aspect of data modeling. And those of you who have been following our classes and our lectures so far, you understand what we mean by this when we are saying what are the criteria to say whether a developed data model is good or not. Well, um, if you are to ask me this question, to be honest with you, I will say, that the answer to this question may vary, okay, from an individual to another individual, okay. But um, the 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 thing is this: what I just want you to um, um, some of the criteria I want you to take note of, okay, which I think that must um, be put into consideration to decide whether um, the data you have developed is good or not could be um, 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 and one you could take it down. For example, um, you should use this as a criteria, okay? That the model is said to be a good model if it can easily adapt to changes according to the business requirements. Now, this is important because uh, in my profession as an accountant also bringing this data analysis um, um, career line also there, I always say it when I'm taking um, participants on accounting software, that whatever you're doing as relating to setup processes, because in every software, setup is also important, okay, most especially when it comes to the business tools aspect. I tell them that everything must be channeled to what the business requirement, because two businesses can be in the same industry, but they have set different requirements, okay, their mode of operations might be different. Come on, in our country here in Nigeria, we have a lot of that. In um, some of you from Ghana who have been enrolling in Kenya, you also agree with me, and those of you also in Canada and the US, okay? You know, um, even based on regions, regions also differentiate some of these things, okay? Also differentiate it. The mode of operations differs. A construction company here, a construction company in the US, you know, they are in the same industry, but their mode of, um, the way they practice and do their things, you know, might be different. So you must ensure that you have these criteria also at the back of your mind, that a model is said to be good, is said to be a good model if it can easily adapt to changes according to business requirements. The difference means that when you're building your model, you're building your data, you must look into the aspect of hope it can adapt where changes will not arise. Okay. So secondly, um, if the data gets changed, the model should be able 
to scale according to the data. So you can see that they are all connected together. Okay. And also, um, a model developed for the data set should have predictable performance because it's required in the aspect of prescriptive analysis, which is what might happen. Okay. You're not predicting the future. They want to know dry season is coming. What might happen to our sales? Okay. And so on. So it's important that you take note of that. Also, I have a question that says, um, and what is a field? What is a field in a data? It's an area within a record reserved for a specific piece of data. For example, if I come over here, you can see there are several areas here which have been reserved for data to be imputed. So this can, um, you know, be referred to as what? A field. So it's very important because it's one of those questions that could just come at random. Then also, we have a question here someone sent to me that says, what is a record in a database? A record is just the collection of values or the collection of fields. When we say collection of fields in a specific or of a specific entity. Okay. So time will not um, permit me, time will not permit me to share some examples that we have on ground already. So um, that's more reason why if you subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay tuned for 102. You know, this cracking the codes 101. You need to stay tuned for 102. Okay. So let's round up with this last question that says, what is a table in a database? Now, a table is a collection of records of a specific type. Hope I did not confuse you. For example, in our next meeting, you're going to see how we are going to um, practically, you know, break down all this we have said. So that when they come up with the question, the practical way, you can be able to approach it. If they come theoretically, you can also be able to approach it. So thank you very much. And um, we have a lot. We also have on Excel and a lot of those tools. Remember, this is Cracking the Codes 101, Mastering Data Science Interviews for Success. And trust me, it's going to be a good time you know, breaking down and cracking your brain on all of this. Okay, so thank you very much once again, and um, see you in our next episode. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also to share our video, so stay tuned. Thank you.